because uh, the Lord reinforces them uh, throughout the Word of God. And so I'm glad uh, that Solomon, in spite of all of his wives, I don't know how he had time to write everything he did, uh, but some way uh, he was able to do it. So Proverbs chapter 24. Did I say five? No, good. 24 and verse 5. Let's all stand in respect to the reading of the Word of God. Proverbs chapter 24, and notice verse 5. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. Titled the message tonight, Do You Want Strength? Well, that's what we're going to look at tonight. And I'm not talking about having a, a gymnasium where we're going to know Paula, no, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to look at physical strength. Uh, but uh, if you want to get strong, uh, we've got a cold gymnasium over there at the Grace and Glory that I'm sure somebody will open the door. You can go in and freeze to death. And so, well, let's bow our heads in a word of prayer and begin tonight. Our Father, thank you for these families that come out tonight. Lord, we're ever so grateful, Lord, that you draw them here tonight. We pray for those that are absent tonight. Lord, some of them I know would have liked to have been here, but not able to. Others listening, Lord, online, we pray that you'll bless them and help them, Lord, to follow through the message tonight that, Lord, their heart would be tender. Lord, to the reception of the Word of God. And Lord, just guide us and direct us. Bless Brother Brent as he works with the young people tonight. Give him clarity of mind and thought that, Lord, uh, those young people would have a heart for thee in the days ahead. Ask now that you'll bless this time. Give me clarity of mind and thought. Lord, as we uh, look into this issue of increasing strength and we'll thank you for what you're going to do in jesus name we pray amen amen may be seated thank you for standing in respect to the reading of the word of god here's some here's a verse that i've underlined in my bible and it just uh, has always been an information uh, verse about strength and where it comes from. Uh, the scripture is not uh, exempting any person from being strong and increasing in strength. Uh, he doesn't exempt nobody. Every uh, Christian ought to be looking to increase their spiritual strength. Now, if you took the word strength and uh, looked at it, uh, how many times that it's used, it's 242 times in your Bible. And sometimes it does mean physical strength, but you'll have to read the context of uh, the uh, word or the sentence or that part of the chapter in order to find out that what strength he's talking about. But we're just going to spend time tonight in looking at spiritual strength. And so where are we going to find it? Uh, how are we going to get it? Well, these are different things that I'm not going to be able to be exhaustive tonight by any stretch, but I hope I can whet your appetite. Uh, to uh, look for it and get into it. And so, first of all, it says, a man of knowledge. Notice that, a man of knowledge. Well, the first thing that he knows beyond the shadow of a doubt is that the Lord Jesus is his Savior. That makes you a wise man. 
uh, to be to start with. If you go back into the book of 1 Corinthians, he talks about the others being foolish. And so he's indicating that this man would know the Lord Jesus Christ. And that the reason is that Jesus Christ is all-knowing. There's no doubt. Who knows what the 50-cent word for all-knowing is? Anybody? Omnipotent. If you can uh, remember that 50-cent word, it's like omnipresent and omniscience and, and those that speak of uh, the character of the Lord Jesus. But it would be omnipotent. Now, do you know that there's nothing, not one thing, that the Lord does not know? He knows everything. Why? Because he's been with the Father from eternity past. He's always been there. You can find that in the book of John chapter 17 where he indicates that he's had fellowship with the Father before the world was ever made. And so I want us to realize that there's nothing that the Lord don't know. That's why he, ha he is called all-knowing. And I want us to realize that God's got a purpose for you and I to know some things. Uh, go with me to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1, or chapter uh, 3, and notice verse 17. What does the Lord want to do for you and I as a believer? Notice he says in 2 Timothy chapter 3. Notice, of course, chapter, or verse 16 shows us that all Scripture is inspired by God. There's nothing in our Bible from the book of Genesis chapter 1 through the book of Revelation chapter 22 and verse 21 that God did not inspire man to write. It's all God's Word. You can, put, uh, you can put down anything you want, and yours is not inspired. But when these men spoke, according to 1 Peter, that it was under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost of God. And therefore, we can be assured that notice verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, Truly furnished unto all good works. Do you know that God will train you as a child of God and the calling that he has upon your life? He will ensure that when he puts you into that ministry, you've got everything you need to begin it. And you will continue to grow in that relationship or that uh, strength as you depend upon him. Like I mentioned several weeks ago, it took him 11 years to get me ready for the prison ministry. From the time I surrendered my will to full-time service back in August of uh, 1970, it took him 11 years to get me ready. I don't know how long it'll take him to get you all ready, uh, but it did work, and I've loved it for the last 43 years, and I'm not going to quit now, uh, just too far into it to quit. But the fact is that he says he will truly furnish you unto all good works. And so it isn't going to be that He's going to uh, just give you everything. You're going to have to study. You're going to have to read your Bible. You're going to have to see what does God want for your life. I knew that there was no doubt he wanted me uh, to be a deacon. I, and I was ordained a deacon. Later, later I was licensed to preach. Uh, then in... 1977, I was ordained to uh, 
be a pastor, pastored for a year, and then came to Missouri up in Tipton, I mean, not Tipton, but uh, Trenton, and uh, there I was a Christian school supervisor for a while, and then it was there that God dealt with me about going into the prison ministry after visiting the Missouri State Prison uh, with Brother Ron, and it was that day that God got a hold of my heart, and I've not changed my mind. Sometimes I'd like to, uh, but the Lord just kept after me and said, Now I called you. Uh, you're not going to quit. And so, uh, but he thoroughly furnished me unto that work. And so, I want you to know that it's going to be a man of knowledge that's going to be able to continue on in spite of the difficulties that you may face. You can see that in Paul's life, that he didn't give up in spite of everything that took place. You can look at Second, uh, yeah, Second Corinthians chapter 11 and read everything he went through. Uh, he gives a list of all the different difficulties that he faced. And one time, even stoned and left for dead. And uh, after they left and the disciples were still around him or his, uh, his men were still around him, he got up out of that pile of rocks and went right back into the city of Laodicea. And the next day, uh, he had raised such a ruckus, I guess, they let him down off the wall by a rope. And so, but he didn't quit. He was a man of knowledge. Now turn with me to the book of Mark, chapter 12, and let's begin to notice some things about this thing of strength. All right, Mark, chapter 12, and verse 30. Now it's Jesus speaking. And so notice you know the verse already, or you know the thought. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God, notice, with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And you can find this commandment uh, repeated in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6. And you can also find it in the book of Matthew, chapter 22. And so it's important, but did you know, or chapter 12, verse 37, uh, not 22. But did you see, he said, with all thy might. And that's what he used in those other verses. But here he uses with all thy strength. And therefore... He said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Now, let me ask you this question. How much do you love the Lord? How much do you love Him? He said, We need to love Him with all of our heart, with all of our soul, with all of our mind, and with all of our strength. That's the first thing God wants out of you and I as an individual is to completely sell ourselves out to the Lord. And that's why he tells you over in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. And so I want us to realize that it's based on how much that we love the Lord and Boy, that word might and strength indicates with great forcefulness. Just think, nothing in between. It's loving Him more than anything else that we have. And therefore, it uh, makes me realize He's talking to the blood washed believer. Now, 
Do you ever wonder why I use that word blood washed so much in the message? Did you know that a person can believe and not be saved? Go with me to the book of James for a minute. James chapter 2. Notice what James said about this thing. James chapter 2 and verse 19. Here we find James writing. And he said this, Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. Notice this. The devils also believe and tremble. The devils are the demons or those who uh, fell with Satan or followed Satan when he was removed from his place of authority back there in the book of Revelation chapter 12 after he had uh, sinned against God and said, I'm going to be like God. And God removed him from his place of authority, and he took one-third of the angels with him. How he convinced them, they was created beings, they are not an eternal being. We've got no idea why that they followed him. But, did you notice it says they believe there is a God. And so, we can be certain that not everybody that believes, you can go back to the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, 22, and 23, and look at a religious crowd that says, boy, didn't we do this and this and this? And the Lord said, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And so it takes more than belief. It takes a relationship with the Lord by grace through faith, admitting that Jesus Christ is exactly who he says he is as the Son of God. He lived a sinless life. He, is, uh, he bore our sins. God took all of my sins, according to the book of Isaiah. Uh, he took all of my sins in 53 and laid them upon his uh, Son. And therefore, when we place our faith and trust in Christ, it isn't only believing. We accept Him as our own personal Savior. And so, I can be assured beyond a shadow of a doubt. Remember um, the individual that was a gathering demoniac? Remember when Jesus confronted him in Gennesaret and uh, in Luke chapter uh, 8 and verse 31, we find that story. And he said that he was filled with a legion. Now, how many, how big a number is a legion? Between three and six thousand. That means there was three to 6,000 demons or devils that was in this individual uh, that uh, was the demoniac of Gadarene. Now, do you know they already know where they're going to spend eternity? They already know that. It's not going to be something that they think they got their trust in Satan, but it says this, and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And that's not talking about the going into the swine and then drowning. No, that word deep indicates that they know they're going into the abyss. And so, I want us to realize how important it is that it's the blood-washed believer that puts their faith and trust in Christ and 
is able to love the Lord with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, and with all of their strength. And so I want us to ask ourselves the question, do I love the Lord that way? Do I love him that way? Turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Let's look at something else about strength. Where does it come from? Well, look at Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 11, talking about uh, Sarah. Now notice it says, through faith also Sarah herself, notice this, received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. When did she have the strength? Now remember, she's 89 years old when the angel talked to her and Abraham was 99 and she was 90 and he was 100 when the child was born. Where did she receive that strength to? Your mom's 94. You think she, you think she could bear a child? <laughs> hey, I don't know where, but it says that she got it through faith and God provided her strength. He didn't make her a 23-year-old woman again. No, she was still 90 when that baby was born. And so, I want you to realize that that strength come from faith. And we also know about the story of the Virgin Mary, how that she conceived, and how that uh, she uh, became pregnant, married uh, Joseph, and bore the Lord Jesus. Now, when did she receive that strength? Well, look at Luke chapter 1 with me. This is the chapter that tells us about the, the angel visiting. And notice verse 38, chapter 1, verse 38. Notice, and Mary said, now the angel has already talked to her and showed her, and she says, how can I? I know not a man. And then after it was all over with, notice what she said. And Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hey, she got strength from knowing God's word. She believed what God had said, and so, I want us to realize with God, there's nothing impossible. Hey, here's two results of bearing children at an old age, and one at an old age and one as a virgin. And so there's four times in Scripture that shows us that there's nothing impossible with God. That's another message. But... The fact is that we need strength in order to accomplish the will of God. Now, realize that all strength comes from the Lord. We can't conjure it up. We might increase in physical strength, but all of our spiritual strength that we get and receive comes from the Lord. And I'm going to give you um, oh, about four or five different places that you can find this at, and we'll read them. Look at Psalm chapter 18 and verse 2. We'll, we'll stay in the book of Psalms uh, for the rest of the evening. Notice Psalm 18.2. Notice here what David said. The Lord is my rock 
my fortress, my deliverer, my God, ooh, my strength, in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. Sif seven different things the Lord is to the believer, and one of them is, He is my strength. Well, I like that verse. How many different names can you come up with for the Lord through the entire Bible? Well, there's 216 if you want to take time to look for them. But there's 216 different names uh, for the Lord that identifies Him. Now, notice Psalm chapter 18 and verse 32. Notice it says, It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. It's God that binds me. That's what the word girdeth means. That he binds me with this strength and makes my way without spot. That's why that he says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. He guides us through his word and he will bind us with this strength. Go to chapter 27 of the book of Psalms. Let's look at another one. Psalms 27. Now notice verse 1. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Hey, he helps me not to be afraid against those who are in opposition to me. He helps me to go on in spite of what they might say or what they might do. He is my strength. And as I look unto him, hey, he'll give me that strength. Now notice Psalm 29. Notice Psalm 29 and verse 11. Verse 11 says, The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Here it is again. And that word Lord is in all capital letters indicating Almighty God. And so it says the Lord will give strength unto his people. And boy, that's what we need as we look for a pastor. We need the Lord to give us the strength to have patience, long-suffering. It's not going to be easy. Not by any stretch of the imagination. It's going to take some wisdom and knowledge and understanding. That's why the pulpit committee wants you to pray for us. We beg prayer because it's not easy. Sometimes uh, conversations go awry, and but we need the strength to say, hey, Your doctrine's wrong. This is wrong. We need guidance and direction and strength from the Lord. And so, let's look at one more place this evening before we close. Go with me to Psalm 39. What's going to steal my strength? What's going, to be, what's going to cause me to be weak in my strength? Well, I'm glad David gave us, a, gave us a reason for it. Look at chapter 39 of Psalms and notice verse 10. 
For my life is spent with grief, and my years with sign. My strength faileth because of mine iniquity, and my bones are consumed. Do you understand that? He said it's because of sin that I lose my strength. Go over to the book of Psalms chapter 32 and notice what he's talking about when he says that uh, my bones are consumed. Psalm 32, and this is in acknowledgment just like Psalm 53 or 51 that talks about uh, David's sin with Bathsheba. And now here in chapter 32, and notice verse 5. Well, look at verse 3, 4, and 5. When I kept silence, how long was he silent about his relationship with Bathsheba? Nine months. Silent. It took Nathan to point his little moany finger at him and says, Thou art the man. Nine months. And so, all this time, he said, My bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. Boy, there was no calmness in his uh, heart. Notice, for day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. He got to the place he couldn't even cry no more and shed tears over the situation. Then notice the next verse. I acknowledged my sin unto thee and my iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Selah. That word Selah just simply means think about what you just read. It's a music term that makes you look back at what has already been said or how it's already been sung. And so here it has the idea, look back and see some truth. Sin will cause you to lose spiritual strength so that you will not be the person that God wants us to be. That's why it's so important that we keep short accounts with God. We need to confess our sins when we recognize them so that we can maintain a good relationship with the Lord and a good fellowship. Well, I shouldn't say relationship because relationship never is destroyed even by sin. It destroys fellowship, and therefore, it's important that we do exactly what David said. But sin, back there in verse 30, or chapter 39, it indicates that my strength faileth because of mine iniquities. These are just some short things about strength. Boy, how we need strength so that we can serve God wherever we're at with whatever we're doing so that He gets the honor and the glory and He will provide us with the strength. Do you know if you look that word strength up in the book of Psalms, you'll find it 74 times out of 176 verses. So strength was important to the writers of the book of Psalms. David didn't write them all. 
Some in there by Asaph is one of his uh, song leaders. One, a couple of them by Moses, and different people wrote uh, some of the psalms, but David wrote the majority of them. And so we can find that, hey, spiritual strength is so important in my daily life. And he'll thoroughly furnish us for any work that he's called us to. So we have the spiritual strength to go through it. Let's bow our heads. Right there where you're at tonight. If there's an area of your life tonight It's not pleasing or you're weak in spiritual strength. Why don't right now there where you're at confess it and the Lord will forgive and work in you so that you can obtain that spiritual strength you need to go on every day in our life. Our Father, thank you. Lord, I'm so glad that, Lord, you show us, Lord, what strength is. You show us, Lord, where to obtain it. You show us what it is in our life, but most of all, Lord, you show us how that it can be taken away from us, that we'll become weak in our spiritual life. Lord, help us to keep close contact with you, Lord, when we recognize that, Lord, there's a sin that you're not pleased with. Oh, God, help us, Lord, to restore that fellowship so that, Lord, we'll be able to be guided by spiritual strength that we might be able to carry out your will for our life, for thy sake. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. All right, let's transition to our prayer time. Got a uh, prayer request here.